claps aren't good. It's just like you got to go at it with confidence and just hit hit your hands hard. Yeah, you just got to hit them hard. Just go for it, that dude. That stung a little bit. <laughs> Especially after everything that happened just before then. For sure. So I don't know if Tate's going to put this in or not. But uh, if he does, you heard it here first. And uh, <laughs> and you saw it if you're on and YouTube. And you saw it if you're on YouTube. Oh. And, and, if, he, and if he doesn't. And if he doesn't. Welcome to the No Mulligans Podcast here in the studio at Franklin Bridge. Bridge. <laughs> that one was definitely more of an anchor intro, like a news anchor intro. Yeah, definitely. Than, than anything I've ever done. But, uh, man, uh, this is going to be... We haven't done a tip. We haven't in done a, long a tip time. in a while. That's what I was gonna say. I feel like it's been uh it's been a while. And I think the last tip we've really we really did was on the back porch of Franklin Bridge when we were doing Champions Playbook and when we were doing Correct. some of the uh the summer night summer night ones where we did the Ash Sherlock stuff. Yeah, Ash Sherlock, we did uh the beanbag the beanbag uh episode where we would toss beanbags and talk about stroke play, uh or excuse me, match play theory. That was really good. Um, oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah, right, that was a lot cornhole? of fun. Yeah. But uh, today we're going to be talking about another swing tip, uh, the setup and how that affects the golf swing or not. Or not. <laughs> so I just kinda, I'm going to give the mic to you. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about, uh, but I'm, I'm excited for this one. Yeah, and there's a story that you have to share that oh, we, I'm, haven't, I'm we haven't said. Oh, i I know. He's like, maybe I should say, I was like, save it for the podcast. We're going to save it for the podcast. But first, yeah. uh, I will say that if you're listening to this on Spotify, first of all, thank you for everybody who listens. We really appreciate yeah. it. We see you guys commenting on the YouTube, uh, on our YouTube videos. We see you guys subscribing uh, on the uh, listening platforms. And just looked at our, our numbers, too. We're well over 30K right now. 30K total listens Mid. for the we're Champions cruising, Playbook man. and No Mulligan. So, we're yeah, we're off and running. And we're so I'd excited. I'd love to see us get to 50K this year. Oh, my God, yeah. With some of the things we have planned coming, I, I think that's definitely possible. Yeah, I think it is do. possible, too. We just gotta, <laughs> we got to blow it up on all the socials. Dude, 50,000 so. listens. I know, that'd be crazy. At the end of roughly three years. That's unbelievable. It'd yeah, be I, awesome. I feel like these bigger creators will like, like take their numbers for granted. Like I saw somebody, some creator who started their podcast like six or eight months ago and they're at like 45 million listens and yeah. I'm just like, oh my God. But I, I think I'm just their very whole, appreciative. The, but their whole energy is behind that, right? Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. A, This is an aside for yeah, us No, too. That, that's totally true. And, and also too, I'm just thankful for the community that we have that's listening to this yeah. as well. So that's super, super awesome. Well, so, we have a lot of local people that listen yeah. to it and they come and talk to us, yeah. which yeah. Is, which is what like yeah that's why i enjoy doing totally that, totally you know yeah and uh, it's just a, it's another good outlet too i think that a lot of people are focused on taking lessons and going out and playing and i think that if you know starting this dialogue i think it's really helping a lot of people so that's awesome yeah you know it's um it's interesting so uh i just sent an uh email um oh blast. but if you're if you're watching on youtube make sure to subscribe no Pol no mulligans podcast and if you're listening, follow and subscribe. There Thanks a lot. There Appreciate it, it. Thanks for the support. <laughs> yeah. Now back to Scott. <laughs> um, so I sent an email at this point by the time it goes out. Um, it'll have been about a week and a half ago. And um, I kind of titled it, you know, um, Fix Your Alignment. You know, it's, it's one of the things people ask all the time. Like, man, I just can't aim straight. Like, I just struggle to aim. Like, man, I'm just so bad at aiming. Bother, you know, and that goes on. Like, I just can't ever fix it. I've been struggling with aim for 10 years. I'm going, okay, yeah. What if I told you it wasn't your aim that was the problem? And, you know, um, when I first came up here April of 2020, so to give you some context, right, so got to do a little yip, 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 walking it back. Yeah, insert rewind insert sound Insert rewind here. sound. Yeah, can, Tate, can you put that in there? <laughs> I said no. <laughs> um, but so we came up here during – Right at the start of COVID, like we had plans to do a big back patio thing, like we do, like, and Brooks introduced me to everybody, but that wasn't going to happen because of COVID. So we did 15 minute evals instead, where I could, and I saw over 200 people in about three weeks. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, Erica was shooting video for me. So her golf knowledge just at that point was very low, even though she'd had some lessons growing up and had one year of college experience under her. Her overall golf IQ was really, really low, especially from the swing standpoint. And <clears throat> so she's just shooting these videos because we're going to pump them out that day with tips and all of that. Like, it was an absolute onslaught for three weeks. 
and towards the end of that, we're probably about a 150 or so in, and we're having lunch one day, and she said, I'm amazed at how many people can hit it at their intended target and not be lined up anywhere close to it. They'll have feet one way, shoulders another way. They'll have, you know, they'll be pulling it straight at their target, pushing it straight at their target, hitting draws, fades, slices, hooks, and they'll be like, oh, that was it. That was a great one. It's like, you're actually not anywhere close. Like, not even close at all. And that statement may seem very, like, basic. Like, yeah, of course, everybody struggles to aim. And, like, they these people weren't aiming for that shot. They were trying to hit it straight. And they were off right or left. Yeah. So, like, that's the context, right? I'm filming them trying to hit it straight at that spot. For sure. And they're not even close, dude. Yeah. Like, they're on another planet. It's wild. I mean, we, we've talked about this on, on previous podcasts, but just how powerful our brain is and how, how much information it takes in that we're not even aware of. The fact that we can unconsciously not even line up straight to our target. And our body said, all right, you idiot. Like, we're going to hit this close, but it's not going to be where you're aimed. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. It, it, our, our body naturally knows where we want the ball to go. And it's crazy how we can look at our target. On, let's say we're on a par three, right? Yep. And I could be aimed 10 feet to the left go, and end go, up hitting a – Go up, hit it. Go further. Right. Go 10 yards, And I'll end up left. hitting this, you know, perfect block that – is right at the pin. And so you hit it straight, and so you think, yeah. I'm aimed straight. Right. Great, I hit it nope. straight. Nope. And you're not. Which is another reason why people think their golf swing is is great, even though even when though you start, not. when you line them up, and right. then they start hitting these shanks, and you're like, well, what's happening? You know? It was like, because, <clears throat> and so to kind of give this more context, right? So yeah, yeah. back to the phrase that Erica said, mm -hmm. which was, I'm, I'm amazed so at how many people can yeah. hit it at their intended target and be lined up nowhere close to uh -huh. it. That's the statement. But here's what she's really saying, and this is what I want everybody to so deeply important. understand. Yeah, yeah. What she's really saying is that the setup responds to the swing, mm. not the other way around. Now, to take this a step further, so... <clears throat> Why would you say that the swing... The setup responds to, it follows the swing. So... The swing mm. is very, very stable. Oh, wow. This is getting the deeper setup, than I even thought. Yeah, yeah. The setup is responding to that. So yeah. what happens is, and so we, we did a fun little thing with her to see it. And you can do this with your friends. So if you're listening to this, find or just some random person on the drive range, like, hey, uh, find somebody that you know is like not aimed at their target, right? Hey, you know you're aimed a little left. Why don't you aim square up a little bit? Get them squared up, all right? Let them hit a ball. They won't hit it at their target most likely, okay? They're going to try it. At best, on the next one, they'll still be lined up to the same target, and they'll try to make a correction. Still won't hit their target. By the third ball, it only takes three. By the third ball, that alignment will have crept right back towards, may not get all the way there, towards where they were when you walked up and showed mm, them. Yeah. And, by the way, they're trying to aim straight. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, okay? that was it. They that was the one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was like, it. That was it. Thanks for the tip, man. Yeah. yeah. And actually, three swings later, they're – so we're swing four, five, six at this point. They're all the way back to where they started. This is – and so this is the perpetual cycle, right? Like, see, I can never keep my aim straight. Well – I can never keep my aim straight. Yeah. So then I took Erica a step further. I said, we're going to go on one of these Facebook golf instructor forums that I'm in. And I said, I'm going to pose a question. What is the most important fundamental in golf? Set up, set up, set up, grip, stance. Set up, set up, posture, grip, stance. Set up, set up, impact. These people are closer to it. <laughs> Good job. You're more qualified, right? And so, like, I used to be in the same category. I used to, like, when I was first teaching for the first five or six years, it was all about setup, right? And <clears throat> the more I watched and the more you do this, why do these same people keep struggling with setup? It's the most basic thing to be able to do. Surely everybody should do that. That's why we start there. Here's the problem. The habit formation in the motion is so ingrained. I don't care how hard you try to aim straight. Even though it's the simplest thing to do, you won't change it. Yeah. And because it's the simplest thing to do, guess where the brain decides to change from first? It decides to change from the setup. It will do it without you thinking. So can I then pose a question where I think this is going? Yeah. So what I think where we're going now is Scott Hassey saying, okay, if we can fix the swing 
first and mm-hmm. get it on plane, get it mm-hmm. going down your intended target. Or the ball, f- like, or shot shape, we fix correct. your slice or your hook or your whatever. Correct. So if we can fix that, then, number one, we will be hitting the ball straight. But then when we align to a certain target, now the swing is already programmed to go in that direction. Versus if we fix the setup first and then the swing follows, well, now the, now our body's just going to adjust to make sure that we can get an impact as, as best we can. Well, and it may not actually adjust. So now you've got – and you've got multiple things to think right, about. Right, right, right. Now i got to change my setup and i got to change my yeah, swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now my list is long. Right. Like, there's right. multiple reasons why that doesn't work. Also, a reason is uh, why I feel like a lot of people don't have success going to a golf coach is because when they f- they fix the setup and they're like, yeah, you're great, go out in the course and play that. Well, they haven't addressed the root problem, so then when they come back, they're just going to divert back to their natural tendency. Yeah. Versus, if you go to Scott Hassey, <laughs> fix the swing, it's more it's a more right. permanent fix. Right, because you're fixing a deeply difficult thing to change so once totally, you start totally. to fix that and you start to see a change in ball flight because remember your brain's trying to get it there yeah that's where your subconscious brain is locked in i'm trying to hit the ball there yeah yeah now if it starts to see the ball shape a certain way it will then give you permission mm. to do the other and best part is a lot of times what starts to happen as they start to let's say somebody who slices it a lot right i fix their slice they might be hooking it at this point but they've got to see a lot of golf balls hook and then within Usually another week or two, sometimes within the lesson, their setup will stop playing the cut. Ah, yeah. And guess what I haven't touched? The setup. Mm -hmm. Guess how many things we've fixed? Multiple. Well. And we've only tried one rather than setup and the swing, and now I've got multiple things to think about, and now I'm not really committed to either, and now I'm stuck. It reminds me of a lesson that uh, I I watched you teach. um, Jeez, this is probably last year at some point. But you were teaching someone, and I was like, don't they need to be a little further away from the ball? Oh, yeah. I remember this. And yeah, I was we like, were up here by the water on yeah, the top Yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, don't they, need, don't they need to step a little bit further away from the ball? And you just go, you're right, but just watch. Just, like, wait. Just and wait. you were just you were telling them one thing to do. Just do this one thing. Do this one thing. They keep on hitting. They keep on hitting. They keep on hitting. 15 swings go by. 15, 20 swings go by. And you could naturally see that person kind of, like, shuffle their heels back a little bit. Right, he started creeping. He started he creeping. Didn't even backwards. know he was doing. Didn't it. even know he was doing it. Didn't even know he was doing it. And as soon as you see that, you see that club get more clearance. You see those hips turn a little bit more, right. and then stopped it with starts, the heel strike. Stopped with the heel strike, yeah. and it's it, and you didn't even tell him to do that. No, he That's automatically the best fixed part. it. And what's crazy is your subconscious will naturally set up correctly if the swing allows for it. Correct. Which is why you like to fix the swing first. Correct. No, that doesn't mean I won't fix your setup. What I'm not yeah. saying is like I never fix the I'm setup. I'm against first. fixing setups. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, if I need to fix the setup, if it's the root cause of the problem, because I'm a cause and effect teacher, right? If if that's the root cause of the problem, I'll fix it. I'm going to use Tate as an example. Tate's grip sucks. Okay. Like if you go to any qualified golf instructor, they're going to fix that grip. Now, he is. A super weak grip, so he's going to slice it. Now, I'm trying to get him to learn how to roll his arms and hands and where his development is as a player is very low. So, like, I'm trying to get a good, solid, proper hand and arm motion. And is it harder to do it from that position? Yes. But that's the point. But that's the point. Yeah. It has to be hard for him to change it. Now, he's starting to draw it. So, you know what's going to happen in his next lesson. We're probably going to make some adjustments to that grip. Yeah. So that he doesn't have to work quite as hard, but he's built multiple good habits, and now we can start working on it. This is also why, and I know that I'm in a circle that can handle the information. Correct. But this is why with some people who are, are less, uh, and not, it's not even like a, a dig at anybody too, but which is why you don't like to let too many people know what you're doing. Because with an example like Tate, you don't want to tell him all that information because you want him to focus on that movement, that movement, that movement. Once he has that movement down, now you start strengthening the grip and you'll start to see the ball fly. And he's going to hit it more solid because you've got to change how his hands sit on the club. Right. Actually gave him more leverage because he has – Right. His, his, yeah. His hands are pretty far separated on the club. We yeah. Bunch them up on top of each other. Now, do you think we can use this as a parlay to go into my swing? Because I have the Absolutely. opposite. Absolutely. I've got a super strong <laughs> so grip. This is what we were talking about. You actually have a fairly weak grip as or, well. Excuse me. Yeah, weak. That's what I'm So about. you two are in a similar category, yes. but your grip is far more refined than his mm. is. So it's fine for it to be weak as, as it sits. Mm-hmm. Um, but for in your case, it's not about that's. At, about your grip in your particular case. So 
we've got you. So we haven't touched your setup really at all. No. In the course of two and a half years. Yeah. And today we made the adjustment to your posture to clean up that setup and boom, there we are. And right? we've got a, a video. We've got a video too that we'll overlay at this part right here. Yeah, so you'll be um, able to see that uh, yeah, golf swing. Timestamp. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, um, but yeah, that's a, a that's one thing too where I feel like I've had an epiphany over the past like two weeks playing golf, yeah. and uh, it's been partly to do with the weight shift that we've been working on, and then you know you mix in a little bit of setup work here and there, and and I feel like I don't have to swing as hard, and it's like wow, where'd this golf swing come from out of nowhere? If you make it easier on them, they'll revert. It's so easy to revert. Mm. Keep it difficult on them and force them to pay attention to what their body's doing and force them to yeah. not be afraid to overdo it. It's yeah. a little bit Bobby Knight-esque in terms of the training. Sure. Of like, I'm going to make – coach, this is hard. Yes, I understand that. But I'm going to make your practice harder than your actual play. And I see where your game's going for the long term. I also understand motor development and like when we change this one habit – what other like uh what am I, what's the word uh not waterfall effect but like trickle effect trickle down yeah trickle down effect is that going to have so as as Tate learns to roll those hands and arms we're also going to see a change in weight transfer we're also going to see a change in the axis of his pivots as he goes through there um, if he tries to do it with his shoulders he'll just hit a topped shank shot that won't work right so he's forced to have to do certain other things really well. He's also going to play around with his ball position and his uh, stance width. Not on purpose. It's just going to happen, right? And what's going to start to settle out is where that needs to be. The brain's going to figure all that out on its own. Mm -hmm. So I can see where – when I talk about being able to see six months down the road, assuming he stays on that one thing, I can see six months down the road. I can see what else is coming along. Which I think is a Which is why I loved your golf swing today before I changed your setup. I was like, oh, yeah. gosh, it's so good right now. Would you say that that swing that I made mm -hmm. almost gave you that permission to then change the others? It tells me. So basically the way I'm looking at it is, ah, the motion's stable. Right? The motion's stable. Now we can make the little adjustment to the body, and you have enough history and context and awareness where once we get you in that position it makes it a little bit easier to get where you want to get to a that's the first piece the other piece for you is that um now the swing will begin to adjust to that setup rather than the other way around so this is why there's an asterisk on the end of this whole thing and the same thing with the article that i sent there are exceptions now the exceptions are low single digit handicaps or swings that have solidified and have enough experience and have somebody kind of oversight on it i have the oversight on you right <clears throat> and so when you get to super high level handicaps so i had a young man um blaine armstrong come back to see me I, he has his first lesson no cheap god me. that that swing too that you posted on social <sighs> how Un good is that unbelievable it, it's perfect it, it literally is perfect if don't, like you don't make it any better now if i need to show you the swing and i'll show you after this before he came to see me coming back and this one i might be able to get it where we can get it up there um for for tate but you can see the before and after The before, his posture was in a place where he was super upright with his chest back in his heels. And <clears throat> he was working, uh, his hands would work up and around, the club head would go inside his hands. And he really didn't like that position. I was like, hey, Blaine, I need you to pitch forward from your hips, straighten your legs up, put the weight in the balls of your feet. Now from there, I just need you to pivot back. You don't really have to do anything. Everything you've been trying to do with your hands, just try to make your hands go over your foot. And so, boom, phew, we're right in that spot. Now, in his case, the swing follows the setup, not the setup following the swing. Because there's enough experience in the game where the brain can pull 
It can actually change the motion. I, I put it this way in the article. I said, the motion is malleable. For most people that are over, if you're over a five handicap, your motion isn't fully malleable unless you're kind of where you're at, where you're fairly dynamic. I can maneuver your motion pretty easily. Um, <coughs> so the motion has to be malleable for the brain to use that as a piece to change. Ah, it's like trying to change a piece of, you know, hard clay. Right. Instead of adding, you know, if you can add a little bit of water to it, it's much right. easier to move. This yeah. is why I said their swing, like golf swings are like very... I would say they're hardened clay. My job is to soften the motion. Put a little water on it. Yeah. Right. So everybody's trying to change the setup. Well, that's the only thing that's malleable. That's why all these golf instructors are trying to fix the setup. Well, that's the only thing that's malleable. Then you're going to try and change the hardness of the motion. That's a harder thing. That's why I don't touch the malleable And then you parts. pretty much just erase that hour that you had in, in a lesson. Right. I just wasted all that time. Like, let's get the motion change. Or it's another reason why you get sucked into going back is because you're like, oh, it was good when I had it, and then right. I lost it. Right. Um, uh, another example this week, I had another junior golfer here. He's like, dude, I've been playing so good. Like, I got a tournament this weekend, now you're asking me to change my setup. I was like, he's just coming off of an injury for, for six weeks. So he's been out, hasn't really played at all. So <clears throat> he's got a tournament this weekend lesson yesterday and i'm sitting there going uh, do i do i change the setup do i tell him that he's he's literally aimed 40 yards right of his target he's pulling everything online now that was the thing we tried to avoid so many years ago like a year how can you do that ago. when you're super closed off to the to the ball and then you're almost like swinging across your body so his hand action's really incredible so he's just holding so the face he's over the top and just holding the face a, off he's hitting a pull draw yeah he's hitting draws they're beautiful draws but they're pull draws they're pulled 30 yards left of his line and then drawing. He shot 36-37 at, oh uh, <laughs> at, uh, at Golf Club of Tennessee. Unbelievable. That's, that's golfing your ball out there. Jeez. Now, I told him, I said, you're about two weeks, four at the most, from the whole thing just completely derailing. <laughs> so I told him, I said, hey, you're going to practice a ton between now and your tournament on Saturday. you got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's plenty of days, and you've got this hour, hour and a half for your lesson to continue to grind. So we correct his aim. So we got the aim corrected, and he's hitting it terrible, right? Because we're back to this same scenario. Like, yep. the swing's like, I don't know what to do with this. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what to do with the one that's aimed right and pull it over the top, right? Because, like, this motion's... Was starting to harden. It's like my hey, job was to not let that motion harden. I need to keep the motion yeah. malleable. Yeah, right? yeah. I need the swing to be malleable all the time because we can change anything we want whenever we want. I can hook it around a tree. I can hit it over this. I can do that. If the motion gets hard, we're screwed. Mm. The motion has to stay malleable. Yeah. <clears throat> and so we got him tightened up, and I said, "You're probably about 18 to 20 balls away from where it needs to be." We're about 12 balls in. He's still struggling. I was like, dude, we still got another like six to eight. Like, hang with me. It's You're getting some that are a little bit better. We're getting back to his under motion that we worked on so hard for a year. And <clears throat> all of a sudden, about ball 15, like, ooh, there's one. That's the shot. Started right on our target line with a little soft draw. So we're back to the same draw. He was appeared to be hitting. He's like, is that also why I was hitting it further? Yeah. I'm like, you're pulling it. You've got – Six to eight degrees less loft on the thing. Of yeah. course you're hitting it further. Your seven iron is now a six iron or five iron. And so now it's cleaned up. It's like your yardage is going to come back a little bit. That's fine. But you're in the correct yardage. Well, and it's good because you're also fixing the trajectory, I imagine, as well. Right. And it's probably coming down at a better angle of attack to hold greens. Correct. So he's getting that cleaned up, getting that cleaned up. It was a right around 20 golf balls. It might have been like 22 or 23. And it was then he started hitting these beautiful little soft high draws. So then we changed clubs, went to a club with less loft, starts hitting, struggle with that a little bit to start, then got that one cleaned up. And so what I wanted him to see is by the time he's hitting the end of the lesson, he was able to hit a number of shots in a row on the correct start line and all that. So in his case, a high level player, the swing, even though in his case the setup was following the swing, the swing started to creep, the setup followed it. Now he's already a kid who's shooting the 70s. This is my point of you have to be less than a five handicap. So we were able to change the setup because we needed to, and then we forced the swing to catch up to the setup. Did you ever ask – this is a random question, super random. Did you ever ask him to hit a cut in this whole time? No. No? Mm -mm. Just because you knew that that motion was already draw bias? Yeah, yeah, I need him. I need him into out more. He's like, man, and things like chunking it, 
toe in it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. we're fine. Stay with me. Yeah. Like, the good ones are coming. We're having to get rid of some of the, like, I told him, I said, you were leaking fuel on the interstate like 80 miles an hour and you're about to crash. <laughs> you didn't know when it was coming, but there was about to be a flame and you were about to have problems. Right? Fair enough. And so I was able to stave that off. Now, if it were Friday and he had taken the lesson and he was teeing off tomorrow on Saturday, I'd be like, dude, it looks great. It's the best I've ever seen it. Run with it, right? And then I'd call him Sunday after the two-day event and be like, depending on how it would go, because it could have broken in the middle of that tournament. Sure. <laughs> right? <laughs> I would have called him and said, hey, I need you to come in for 30 minutes on Tuesday because we got to fix this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So that's, but that's the wisdom that I got from Hank a little mm. bit, too, of like knowing when to touch it. Wednesday yeah. would have been, if he had taken the lesson today, I'd be that. really torn because well, I'm like, ee! And that's one thing, too, that I think a lot of amateurs don't think about when it comes to golf coaches, and especially high-level golf coaches who are teaching people who are playing in competitive rounds all the time. Right. There's an extra layer of, of carefulness that you have to have when you're teaching a high-level player. And I want to kind of relay it to, to Ricky and Butch. I'm sure Butch has implemented things slowly but surely to see him so start he climbing can make progress. so he can make progress as he plays. Because right. I'm sure if you tear it all right. down, he's going to play right. like crap. That's how golf instruction is supposed to happen. That's yeah. the only way it should happen. Yeah. You should be able to make incremental Clip that. incremental Clip that. progress over and over and over again. Yeah. It's you should be able to do that correctly. Is there for a time sure. and place for an overhaul? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. questionable even then. Yeah. Right. Your golf swing needs to develop at small thresholds at a time, and there's nobody better in the world at it than Butch. Yeah. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Because <clears throat> He's able to continue to see the progress. And that's human motivation, right? If you're seeing a little bit of progress, a little bit of progress, sure. so much better. Rapid progress is terrible. Yeah. I told you about the worst, one of the worst, you know, it's funny, the worst lesson I ever gave. You know, that's the one we posted, right? Yep, There's yep. actually one that was probably worse than that in the sense of its impact. I had a lady, she had never broken, she had never shot in lower than 44 in her life. Okay, she's like, what's your lowest eight, nine hole score? 44. She's only broken 90 like once or twice. And uh, she goes out and plays after her lesson that day, drives back to Tuscaloosa. I was in Birmingham, drives back to Tuscaloosa, plays her home golf course, shoots 38. Stripes it. Now, the lesson went really well. She hit it a lot better. That was actually sometimes it was almost the worst thing that could happen. All of her lessons after that were terrible. Because what was she expecting? She was expecting this massive improvement. And if you do the opposite of that, and they don't make any progress, right? That's the changing the setup and having to change the swing. You're changing too much, right? If you do that, then they don't have any motive. Like, this sucks. Yeah, I was like, going to say, you know what's interesting about terrible. it is like you're changing something that's physical little by little. But in reality, you're changing the mental oh. little by little. Absolutely. Well, I know you say absolutely, but like that's it's, the way it it's, should be done. it's funny how you're training the mind with right. a physical thing. right. Which is, I think, fascinating. I guess I don't find it that fascinating. It just seems to be normal to me. Well, I just think, you yeah, know, no, normally when you think about, like, changing the mind, you think about, like, sitting down in a classroom and learning something, right? And, right. like, hearing a lecture and taking that in. But you're training the mind with a physical motion, which I think is wild that you're, that you're doing that. Because, and, it's, and it's at a subconscious level. It's at a level that only you know. And I think that's that's really cool. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it that way, but I think well, it's because you're cool. doing it every you do it every day. Yeah, and I've developed it, and I'm only just now starting to see it and understand it. Well, I guess I say I that too in the realm of confidence building more than yeah, anything. yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. But there's it's not just confidence building. It's like it's motivation. Like, how do you get people to practice? Yeah. Yeah. All these golf instructors are like, my students never practice. I was like, because they left and they didn't hit it any better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Like. They got to hit it better. Mm -hmm. They have to hit it better. If they don't hit it better, what are you doing? Be like, well, that's just a quick fix. I was like, it doesn't have to be a quick fix. In fact, wouldn't you want a quick fix? I'll uh, I'll leave. What are you paying people $100, $125, $175, $250 if you go to the big guys, $500, whatever? Yeah. Like, yeah. What are you paying them for? Right. You're paying them for them to get it done quickly with a short list mm -hmm. that is simple and easy to do. Mm-hmm. That leads to both short and long-term change. That's what you're paying for. Is that worth 
what you're painting? I think the answer should be yes. What's uh, What's funny is we started off this whole podcast by saying I had a story. I never got around to it. Uh, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll leave you guys with this one just because I think it, it also encapsulates what we've talked about in the entire podcast. Yeah. Was I was playing uh, over at McCabe by my house in West Nashville. That's where I play when I can't come out here. And um, matched up with a random random group. It's two high schoolers, but you know they're 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 playing in high school and they're playing for one of the big private schools in Nashville. Yeah, and so you know they were sticks. They they were pretty good. They were pretty good players. But uh, I I remember this is and I couldn't figure out what he was doing because I wasn't I was never directly behind him when I was watching him. Yeah, when I was watching him hit, and uh, so he would either hit these just roped drives straight down the middle, straight as an arrow. Or he would hit these big push slices that, like, it would just go, like, <laughs> off the edge of the planet. And he's sitting there, you know, just trying to figure out what's wrong with him and, and everything like that. He's like, crap, man, I haven't been able to be consistent all day. We get to the last hole, right? It's a uh, pretty much a long drive contest. Hit it as far as you can. And uh, he's hitting in front of me. I'm sitting, I'm sitting right behind him. And uh, I notice, but I'm not going to say anything. Like I'm not saying anything to these public guys, and especially, <laughs> especially to high schoolers that I don't know. You're not competitive and, like, at all, dude. Like I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. And uh, and it wasn't out of, it wasn't out of competition. It was just out like, dude, it's the last hole. Like I'm not giving I'm you a tip, right? I'm ready to go home too. The sun's setting. <laughs> and uh, this guy. If you've ever played McCabe on the uh, south nine, the last hole, it's kind of a slight dogleg to the left going into the clubhouse. And he is set up looking at the driving range on the right side of the hole. Like he is looking at the practice tee. And it's like, I'm not even joking, probably 60 yards off his intended target. He's aimed left, going to the right. And he hits this. He's aimed left. He's aimed so far left. Okay. Okay, got it. He's aimed so down. far left, like to where if he actually was hitting it where he was looking at it, it would go over the driving range into the parking lot, probably hit a windshield. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. And so he hits this big slice, this big slice off of off of the off the tee, and I, it was his body saying, "Listen, dude, if we don't correct here, we're hitting this thing into the net or into the parking lot." Right. And so he just hits this big push cut push cut fade thingy it goes on to the first hole it like off the fairway to the right and i'm like dude you just like slice this ball probably 60 80 probably 80 to 90 yards off your intended target <laughs> and i'm like i didn't know it was possible to do that right <laughs> from, from so, that setup so here's so let's go a step further i know this isn't supposed to go longer but you know this is going great so here's a step further so there's a book by mark brody did the every shot counts that's the whole strokes gain thing, right? That's that whole deal. One of the things he talks about, we've run thousands of computer simulations. If you have this shot ball flight pattern, you need to aim into the left rough over here. Okay. Follow that logic. Sounds great. We humans don't like hitting at trouble. So, yeah. like, let's say he's trying to play his slice that he's hit a couple of times into the fairway. This was a bigger slice than any of the slices he's hit all day, right? Because he's aimed in trouble. So now the brain's picking up on that. Yeah. I better not hit my baby slice. Yeah. I'm going to hit to make sure. So actually what yeah. happens in that scenario, if we use Mark Brody's book, computer simulations of hundreds of thousands of simulations, whatever, like you take that slice shot pattern, you aim it far enough left where half of them in the fairway, half of them are in the left rough or however you want to shake it out. That pattern will actually get bigger Exaggerate. Yep. and go further right. Yep, 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 That's yep, yep. Because we were dealing with the human brain, not a robot. Which I remember that That's we. That's the problem. This was a big topic when I first started hitting because I'm like, okay, if you play a hook, if you play like a draw, or we were talking about my pull draw. Right. And I was like, I don't want to aim too far right. And, and I just want you to aim a little. Just a little bit. But I remember it's like, dude, it's either like perfect or it's a freaking duck hook like it's it's either one or the other and that's why right. i didn't feel comfortable playing it a lot because i didn't have the confidence that i was able to hit it consistently enough correct. to hit that nice baby draw correct so i just think that's fascinating the fact that the brain will over exaggerate even if it is the default pattern. that was something i learned from sue i back to our yeah, podcast with yeah, sue yeah, I, yeah, yeah is we did this at timberline she remember her telling me um you know playing a fade on this hole it's a dog leg right 17 at timberline and she's, I was like, yeah, this player's playing this. She did, but you can't aim him too far left. Mm. If you aim him too far left, he'll actually hit a worse slice mm. than he did before because yeah. the brain knows there's trouble over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, And so it's 
there's a weird balance in there, which is we're back to the same thing. Don't try and change the setup first. Change the motion. Yes. Change yes, the stinking yes. motion. So, like, the takeaway mm-hmm. is, like, get in there and change the motion. Over-exaggerate the motion. I don't care. Where you're, stop worrying about your aim. If you're not under a 10, I'd even go as far as maybe if you're not under a 5. Like, stop trying to worry about your setup. Let's just change the motion. It's the wrong thing to start with the setup. I know that's profound to say that. You can throw it on social media. I will I will go to the grave telling you the I vast you majority will. of situations, not all, the vast majority, I am not touching your setup until we clean up the motion. Well, let's isolate it too, right? Let's use that that, you know, that slice scenario. If we take that swing, right? And let's say we take the 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 median shot, right? The the dead middle one. Right. And we fix their setup. Well, what's the shot shape going to do? It's going to hit it in the fa- in the rough on the right, right? Right. And so that's why the brain will divert back to aiming to the left because it's like, well, if we're going to hit this motion that we've hit a million times, we have to hit left in order for it to be in the fairway. Right. So that's the question that I would have for golf pre- professionals out there is why do you fix the setup first then? Because if the motion's not going to th- – what good is the setup if the motion's not there? Here's, here's the other thing. It forces the student to have to keep coming. Yeah. Well, I mean, it if might be a good business decision. It might be a good business decision, but if you have that business decision, then I don't think you should be going and seeing that no. golf professional. No, there, so. there are philosophies to change the setup. It is valid to change the setup first. Sure. The thing is, you got to understand, man. You're going against. You're going against human motivation. Yeah. You're adding a list of things to their list. You're fighting upstream. You can do it. Yeah. I've done it. I spent the first. Five to seven years of my teaching doing that, and it was still hanging on until mm-hmm. I came up here. And I'm going, and when Erica said it, I was like, I've had this. I haven't been able to put it in words for two years. Yeah, it's like 2019 is when I started noticing it, and maybe late 2018. And I was like, you know, I'm just gonna fix the motion first. Plus, they get to see immediately, like, oh, I can actually change something. Yeah, it's it's back to the Dave Ramsey's our guy now instead of <laughs> instead of Gary V. Instead of Gary V. Yeah, uh, but like. Dave Ramsey understands people like, well, he needs to do more than a thousand dollars in the savings account. Like, he needs to go to two thousand with modern inflation. It's like, well, you might be right, but two thousand's still a big number. One thousand's doable. A thousand dollars. All right, how much stuff can I sell in my house? I can get to a thousand dollars in my savings account. That's doable. So, like, that's you have to understand human motivation. When people are motivated, like, oh, they don't ever practice. I was like, oh, I can get them to practice. We're dealing with the psychology through the motion. Yeah. People hate being out of control. You You're put fixing. people in the driver's seat, man, it's amazing what people can do when they feel like they're in control of their life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's the right way to go about it, and that's the reason why we're here, and that's the reason why I won't let anybody else touch my golf swing. So what's, what's the, I guess, what's the tip? The tip is stop trying to fix your setup yeah. and just fix the motion? Like. But yeah. that's harder. I get that. Well, no, well, I think I think it's malleable. still I think it's still a good tip just because yes, it does make it malleable and it also tells people as well that we need to fix the source of this problem instead of yes. and we need to fix the source of the problem yeah. rather than just it's a, a, a permanent fix instead of a temporary fix. I'm going to get to the setup just like these teachers who fix the setup first eventually get like yeah. get to the golf swing. Yeah. It's just a harder jump and I think we can For get sure. there faster. Totally. And the best part is if I fix the motion first, if we pick the right piece, a lot of times the setup begins to follow. So you don't even have to touch that and it's more natural, less to think about when they're playing. Correct. And I think that the tip is really that you need to fix the motion before you fix the setup to go see Scott for a lesson. But also, too, I think it's good just golf awareness for people who are out there who are thinking about going to get lessons or thinking that every golf professional is the same and that anybody can fix it, right? It's like, sure. And we'll all and they, probably fix a lot of the same right. things. Right, and they the might they way, might be right? able to fix the same things the same way, but like I think this is important because if you do think about the psychology of it, if you do think about uh, – the way that that ends up parlaying into the rest of your golf swing being easier, you're not fighting an uphill battle anymore. One of yeah, one of my favorite things we had. Um, I'll finish with this that we do in our ladies' clinics. We do it in the last class of the ladies' clinic. We don't do it in the first one. We do it in the last one. <clears throat> so we give them all principles in the first couple weeks. Then we refine the motion so it's specific to them. Then we finish with this. We teach them how to curve it left and right. <laughs> And one of the ladies asked today, she said, why do I do that? Why, why would I need to do this? I said, it's not about you needing to do this. It's about you being in control of your environment. Mm. And I said, it's amazing what people can do when they're in control. Like, you can make a perfectly pretty golf swing. Sure. But if you don't have a connection to where that ball's going and you don't have a way to self-correct that ball, we're in trouble. Mm-hmm. And so 
it's we gave them that piece because what I want people to understand by fixing the motion first, I want you to see that you can change your outcome. Mm. Oh, the golf gods got me. No, no, no. You got you. Okay? Like, no. You, you can control your environment. Stop trying to make a perfect golf swing. Yeah. Start trying to understand how to maneuver the golf ball. And sure. you can do it. You'd be surprised. I teach my seven, eight, nine-year-olds two, three weeks in how to curve the ball left and right. Love it. Yeah, no. I mean, you can do it too. Totally, you can. So I think that's the tip, really. I think there's a, multiple tips in here. I don't think there's like a specific one where it's like there's a, a lot be of all... hot takes that we can well, throw on social. Yeah, no, hundred <laughs> percent. But I think when uh, when people think about a swing tip, they think about you know, oh, make sure like you know your your wrist is bowed at the top, right? Like that's just like an example, right? But right, right. I think this is there's a bunch of tips sprinkled through this that you can take and go to the course with. And even the swing thought of focusing on that motion instead of your setup, I think will help a lot yeah. of people too. So. And I really want to thank Erica for just being uh, not just somebody who's just taking the videos, right? Yeah. Is to be able to put into words. I was like, oh, that's it. I've, I just haven't been able to put it in words. Sure. So like by a, being an observer, she was able to articulate the thing that it was I was trying to get to. Mm. That has become a staple of not only my teaching, but our teaching here at the Franklin Bridge Performance Institute. For sure. So Great you, tips for you guys to take home. A lot of ways to do it, but I think we do it pretty good here. I think so, too. I think so, too. <laughs> it's another reason I started the podcast. So thank you guys so much for listening, uh, viewing, watching, subscribing, wherever you guys are tuning in from. We really appreciate you guys. From Scott and Jack here in the studio at the Franklin Bridge. No mulligans. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. There's no rules. Oh,